in that hell loop. Do you think that that song that was playing, it was kind of like a calling, like maybe Chester was speaking to you in a way. And now when you hear that song, does it kind of have a place in your heart? Like the song saved my life. Absolutely. And it, it was it was really hard for me to listen to it for a long time because, you know, I, I would hear it and I go, if this song had not played, I would be dead. And there's no like if ands or buts. And I don't know if it was my parents or an angel or Chester or the universe or what it was. But yeah, I knew in my very deepest core that I was meant to be here. And I didn't know why at the time, but I knew that I wasn't meant to jump. And I knew that, you know, I had to find a way. I had to fight. I had to, to find my purpose. And I will say when I came down, like in the days after, I had made a pact with myself that I was going to give this absolutely everything in the world for one year. And if at the end of that year, I still felt that same pain, I gave myself permission to jump. Because I knew that, you know, Chester or whatever you want to call it had saved me in that moment, but he wasn't always going to be there. And that was kind of the underlying message, right? Like I'd lost my parents. I'd lost this, this influence of Chester. I'd lost, you know, everything. I was a thousand miles away from my friends. I lost all these things, my relationships, but I still had me. And I had relinquished my power in a way because, you know, I, I, I defined myself. I was like, I was a victim of rape. I was a depressed person. Like I was a person that had depression and I, I relinquished my power. And when I started turning it around and saying, I'm a survivor of rape and I'm a person who has symptoms of depression, but that those things aren't who I am. And I'm certainly not gonna give my power to my rapist. I'm not gonna give my power to this disorder because I'm more than that. And because they don't deserve it. They don't deserve that power. They don't deserve you know, my, my, my energy like that. So you mentioned that you gave yourself a year. What was that mission that you wanted to accomplish in a year? It's kind of crazy because I just wanted to be happy. I realized that I'd never really genuinely truly been happy. And I went to a mental health professional. I went to a psychiatrist when I came back um, from Canada. And I said, look, this is what happened. I told her about the, the hotel room incident. But I said, I am determined to change this. I'm determined to do anything I have to do to get out of this depression, to get out of this hole, because I don't want to wind up back on the ledge. I said, I'm tired of just being in a place where I feel that all you really care about is me not killing myself on your watch. Like, that's really, at the end of the day, what it seemed like. There was never a, well, let's, let's make sure that you're living a fulfilling life, that, that you want to live, you know? There was never any, how do you take care of yourself? Like, how do you really uh, have optimal mental health? What can you do, Amanda? There was never a point where anybody gave me that power. And when I told her, I'm determined to be happy and I just need your help. I need to know what to do. She straight out told me, well, that's not possible for someone with your disorder because, uh, or with your diagnosis, because I've been diagnosed as having a serious mental illness or SMI. She said, that's not possible for someone like you. Like you could be functional, but you'll never really be happy. And that was, we were talking about the heroes and the Elwoods thing. That was my Elwoods in the bunny costume when Warner told her she wasn't smart enough for law school because I just, there was this fire inside. And all I could think of was my dad. And there was actually Mike Shinoda, a song called Prove You Wrong. And that's all I could think of. I went in my car and listened to it because I was like, 